All right, here's the 50 hour review on this 2023 Hustler Surfer Pro with the 34 inch deck. And the hour meter is reading just over 53 hours. I'm recording this video on the morning of July 4th. I probably won't post it until this Saturday, uh, July 8th, or you know, possibly Sunday. I'll need a, a day or two uh, to edit this so I can uh, post it. Michelle's probably put 40, 40 hours on the mower. I've done about 10 myself, and between her and I, we are pretty impressed with this little mower here. It's definitely, it's definitely a tight little machine. It's really exceeded my expectations. Now, is it perfect? No, but there are a lot of good features on this mower for being compact and i'll give you some of the the good things that i like and later on i'll i'll give you some things that that are not so good to start off this mower is powered by a kawasaki fs 54-1 v which is a 15 horsepower engine and my personal opinion it's perfect for for this size mower I'm only 150 pounds and you know I'm, I'm impressed with uh, the performance the mower is also equipped with a dual hydrostatic um, hydros which are by the hydro gear they're the Z, ZT uh, 1800s it's kind of hard to see them under the cover there but they are small hydros but for I haven't noticed any any real problems with it uh, as far as uh, the hydros being you know on the smaller side most uh, stand-ons of this size usually have at least the uh, ZT 2800s but uh, so far you know like you say I was only 100 I'm only 150 pounds and I haven't noticed anything so if you're taller or or heavier I'm not sure if that would uh, be a uh, a concern of yours if you were interested in, in getting a mower like this top speed is six miles an hour now many might say that's slow but on a mower like this this is a, a mower that you would use on mainly smaller yards where you would typically push mow so most people who push mow are only push mowing three to four miles Per hour anyway so at this at being at six I mean you're you're pretty much mowing equivalent as twice as fast as if you were really hustling you know push mowing the height adjustments really easy to adjust they have this pin here that you pull out and you put it to whatever uh, cut height that you want it goes from uh, two inches all the way up to four and a half inches one of the big things about having a commercial mower over a residential mower is the cut quality now this mower has a 34 inch deck which has two blades the 48 uh, version of this mower has three blades now we went through a dry season so far the uh, May or April and May uh, we had very little rain we didn't have as much as we would typically have and we also went into June pretty much in a drought so a lot of our weekly yards were turning into bi-weekly and our bi-weeklies were turning into every three weeks and there was even some yards that we skipped a month so it was it was pretty bad so we didn't put the hours on this mower as much as we thought we would we thought we'd probably have about a hundred hours on it so far but we you know just like you say we just reached uh, 50 so but so far uh, as far as the drier type of uh, turf it's been it's been phenomenal it even stripes pretty decent uh, without having a striping kit so I've been pretty impressed uh, just with the uh, you know off the uh, you know brand new off the floor showroom floor whatever you want to call it um you know out of the box it it, it does very well 
as far as the cut quality and, and the striping uh, capabilities. One of the things I initially didn't like, I actually really like now, is the the covers that uh, over the spindles and, and the belt. The you know I thought you know originally that you know not having the cover on there that grass clippings would you know collect under under the uh, cover here, and I would have to take the cover off. And you know usually when you do that, it's caked uh, with uh, grass clippings, but I actually like it open like this because at the end of the day uh, I can you know when I put it back into the uh, garage I can you know take an air gun and I can easily blow out uh, underneath these covers without actually taking the cover off. Since we do a lot of residential small yards I like the three in one a mowing uh, capability which means is that I like to be able to discharge the clippings uh, mulch the clippings or uh, bag the clippings so when we bought this mower I also purchased a, a bagging uh, kit for it and I installed that and I also installed our version of a shoot blocker now from the switch up here I can easily open and close the chute so I can go into uh, full discharge mode and then I can close the chute and go into uh, mulching mode. Now this is right now it's not true uh, mulching uh, capability because it needs the uh, baffles inside but being I was pretty impressed that even with the chute closed that it's pretty well doing really well with the uh, mulching capability because a lot of times with uh, commercial decks they're designed to uh, be a discharge uh, design and a lot of the clippings will want to kind of hang up on the on the dis discharge side of uh, of the deck and you'll start getting those uh, clipping line you know the trailing clipping lines but on the dryer side uh, you know since we've been doing you know the ones on the dryer side the it hasn't really been collecting on the one side so i've been pretty impressed so i've been wanting to put the the baffle kit in there to see you know if it actually improves it as well but for right now um I'm, we're just kind of running with this uh system we're currently running with the uh, mulch blades. These are the, the wavy style blades, not the gator style blades. And I was a little concerned that maybe what, it didn't have enough lift on the uh, blade uh, tail there, but it's actually pretty good. It actually bags very well. And, you know, as far I'll show a clip here of Michelle uh, emptying the bag, and you can see how easy it is for her to, you know, disengage the, the uh, bag from the uh, mower plate here and and be able to put it back on and uh, you know just keep on mowing it's 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 quick and easy it's 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 more almost like a push mower in a sense it's it's not very difficult uh, to do and you know we're not big fans of the uh, cages they even though they're light uh, they just become more bulky the the fabric style um, I like those better uh, over the uh, cage uh, metal grass catchers. Like I said in the beginning of the video, overall, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this mower. Now, there are some not so good things that, that Hustler could improve on. Now, it's not a, these things are, are not a big deal. Uh, these would just be like little improvements, but nothing, nothing major. Um, it's just little, little things that that may help uh, with the performance uh, on this mower and the comfort, um, you know, going forward. Now I know that you know a lot of these things are are cost based. You know, if they start in, improving things, that you know the the price of the mower would go up, but. You know, if in the future, if I can either, you know, modify it myself or, you know, Hustler themselves would, would do some changes, that, that would be great. I'll start off with the rear tires here. 
they are they it gives you that narrow look to it and i understand that you know you can you know you don't want to go outside the uh size of the deck so that, you know they had to use a, a what i would call a narrow tire and now if you get the 48 version they do have the the wider tires now if you watch tony of tony's lawn care he's got the 48 inch version of this mower and he claims that it does you know pretty well with the wider tires now as far as this mower here this is you know my opinion it 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 doesn't it doesn't hold hills very well now you can go up and down the hills you know fairly well but trying to go across the hill it's uh it can get you know pretty pretty leery sometimes especially on on steeper uh, inclines now i got some clips here of me just doing some little little inclines and you can see me kind of slipping and sliding and even at one point you know i'm i'm going across the you know down the driveway there on a little slope and i hit a there's a i don't know hole or something in the uh you know along the driveway there and i hit that and, and almost lost it the next thing is the the platform itself there's really not a lot of of comfort uh you know as far as cushion um it's kind of hard to see uh down there but it's not much spring cushiony action on there and it can you know if you're on a on a bigger size yard and you're kind of bouncing around you do kind of feel it uh in your feet now again uh tony of tony's lawn care he experienced the same uh, situation and he ended up putting uh, some kind of a pad uh, cushion pad on the platform there to help absorb some of that shock the next thing is the sensor for the uh, operator present now on when you when you get on the uh, platform here it triggers a sensor now you can't see the sensor but this is the adjustment uh, for the sensor you can make it more sensitive or less sensitive and watching other videos uh, from other uh, channels and also from uh, Tony they've uh, expressed uh, concerns about adjusting this sensor uh, to your liking now if you're if you're bouncing around a lot uh, on properties you want the sensor more on this side but when you're when you're light you know if you're you know a person that's not that heavy you know which you know me and my wife are that, that we we have it more on this side to make it a little bit more sensitive because you want you want this thing to work if you actually do come off uh the platform that you do want the mower to shut down because i feel that if it's all the way on this side it's less sensitive and the mower could still run um uh, because it hasn't um you know a, the sensor hasn't been adjusted correctly moving on to the gas tank it's a two gallon capacity it's fairly easy uh you know because the gas cap's right there um so you don't have to uh you know do any you know crazy methods of uh trying to fill it uh, i know like some other uh other brands you know you have to open up the um you know the uh, pad here or you know fill it from from the inside there but on this one here like I said, it's pretty easy. Now, hopefully from camera here, you can see that it is basically full. You can see the fuel there pretty much topped off. And I did uh, put exactly, it does hold exactly two gallons of gas. I filled a can up, a gas can of two gallons, and this is pretty much... Uh, it does take uh, two gallons of gas but other uh channels and even uh, i've gotten comments that people other uh, uh subscribers saying that their gas gauge doesn't work correctly now you can see that it was full but it's only showing uh roughly three quarters uh full on the gauge now i thought you know there might have been some kind of adjustment or something like that but after you know looking into it in my opinion it's got the wrong 
gas uh, gauge on there and I'll show you here I'll, I'll set the camera up and I'll show you what I'm talking about all right here this here is the uh, gas gauge hopefully you can see it uh, from my skag uh, 36 and it's a, a five gallon um, gas uh, reservoir now I'm going to take this gas gauge out Now, I was reading three quarters. Now, if I take this out, you can see the difference in the size. Okay, so when this is in here, like you say, when it's full, it's three quarter, and then when it gets about a quarter, it's empty. And you can physically see that, that there's different sizes here. Now, like you say, this is off my skag, so if I put the skag one in there, it reads, it reads full. So you can see where it's full. And I emptied the tank and when I emptied the tank, it went all the way uh, to E. So to me, um, Hustler put the wrong, the wrong gas gauge in there. Now, I don't know I was going to call, I don't know if the dealer can do anything, but I was going to call Hustler or, or somebody, try to get a hold of somebody and saying, was it, you know, they put the wrong gauge in there? Because I, I priced these and they were looking like they were like 60 bucks because I was just going to buy one and put one, but I don't know if I want to spend, you know, $60 to, to have that replaced. And like I said, it's not a huge deal. I don't know if it's on, you know, during the production when they were, you know, assembling these things that, you know, they, you know, put the wrong one in there or what. But uh, at some point, you know, I don't know if I'll just live with it or try to uh, see if I can get, you know, one of, of this size. Okay, the next thing is the, this right here is the tensioner spring for the, the drive for the hydros now if you watch uh i cut grass uh he um had a video where his spring broke within a couple hours of uh, use and even on my channel when i did the initial overview um subscribers were saying that uh they had had theirs break um you know pretty pretty quickly and so what i did was i ended up uh you know buying a spring you know just in case because i didn't want to be down for you know possibly several days you know waiting uh, for the dealer to uh, order a spring so i went ahead and just spent the ten dollars uh, to get the spring and luckily i haven't had a problem so that, that's a good thing so you know those of you who uh, experienced that um you know i'm not sure you know if if, if you put the new spring in there if it's uh you know any better you know if it was some kind of uh defect with the spring i don't know but just to let let people know that uh that was uh, a concern uh for people who you know got this mower this next thing i need to uh, look into further and it's the uh the height adjustment now this little notch here is what they call the transport mode and when you you know lift the deck all the way up it should be able to uh, fit in that notch but for some reason it doesn't go up all the way now I'm gonna have to uh, probably check the the height of the deck and just you know verify that um, you know that it is the correct height for you know whatever you set it for or you know there's something with the uh, linkage or something that's you know causing you know this not to go uh, all the way up to you know get it into transport mode now on the other hand uh watching tony's uh videos he mentioned that you know his can does go all the way up in the transport mode but he says you know when it's bouncing around on the trailer it has you know popped 
and you know come down on them now that's uh you know you know can be a concern too um you know especially if you're taking your mower on and off uh, your trailer and you know some of the the angles of the gates you know your your mower deck uh, you know will catch so but what i normally do is since i can't get it in the transport mode i usually just put the pin uh, on one of the two higher uh, settings all right my last little thing that i'd like to see either you know me modify or improve is this pad the pad it's just uh very uncomfortable um especially if you're riding it for for a good amount of time or you're on a bumpy bumpy terrain now i'm not the tallest person i'm probably only like five nine and when i get up on the platform my my knees are just basically might be hard to tell pretty much right at the edge of the uh, you know pad here so and it's really nothing much as far as cushion and my little bony knees man they they can get sore you know after uh, riding this thing for a little while so i'm gonna need to try to beef up uh this pad of some sort because i definitely don't want to be wearing uh, knee pads when i'm mowing that's pretty much what i have for this video as far as the uh, good and not so good um concerns that you know that i have uh i am going to make some some mo more modifications going forward and one of them is this switch that i i originally put here on the uh, right side of the control panel to adjust the uh, the uh, chute blocker it's okay but you know when i'm when i'm mowing i like things on the fly so i might try to move this switch in here in the center to make it more accessible when i'm mowing uh, because i like the ease of being able to easily or quickly adjust the chute you know accordingly uh, especially on those yards that you know you don't want to be shooting into the uh, you know the flower beds and such I also may may look into a, a foot switch on the uh, platform here but I don't know same thing I don't know if I get one if it's going to you know since this platform's not that big you know to begin with that you know if it's going to be uh, in the way um, you know while mowing or you know michelle's mowing but we'll see I'll, I'll have to see what those switches uh you know what they look like and if, if if that's an option or not this concludes this video i appreciate you watching please like comment and subscribe if there's any any questions or anything uh that i didn't cover you know i'll be happy to you know uh address them in uh, future videos and I'm going to make some comparison videos. I noticed that a lot of you like the comparison videos. So I'm going to do a comparison of uh, this mower compared to my Skag uh, 36 and show you the uh, differences. And also, um, if you haven't subscribed to uh, Carlo of the Cutting Force, he just purchased a, a right standard B. Uh, 36 so I'm, I'm pretty happy for him and I talked to him and he said that uh, at some point we'll do a uh, comparison of the standard B uh, compared to the Hustler uh, Surfer Pro 34 so I'm looking forward to that you know doing that video and uh, until then uh, like you say I appreciate you watching and uh, we'll check you out in the next video see ya <laughs>